Mm -hmm. uh, to, when, when we have so many guys who are underperforming their historic norms, your natural inclination, and I can't blame a single player for thinking of this. When they wake up, they're thinking, oh, my gosh, it's June and I'm hitting 150. Oh, my gosh, it's June and I have the highest strikeout rate of my career. Oh, my gosh, and I could, I could do this up and down our lineup. And, and I think it's reasonable that when they wake up, their first thought is, how am I going to get myself going? And when our clubhouse is right, it's when all of them are, are chipping in to, to contribute to something greater than themselves. And, and right now that's really hard to do because of the complete nature of our struggle. Even through some of these struggles, is this where you are thankful, Jerry, that you can lean into the continuity and trust that you've had with Scott for decades and decades? Yeah, I, there's this is the same manager who's finished, you know, in the top three and manager of the year for the last two years. <laughs> you know, it's a, with roughly the same group of players that he has today. And you know, I, I I don't I don't think Scott got worse as a manager. I don't think you know, frankly, I don't think th this is permanent. I, I think we have a, an incredibly talented group of players still sub 28 years old on average age up and down our our roster, which is you know, by the standards of our league, a young team. And, and I don't think we're, we've seen, you know, the end of, of the Mariners being a good competitive contending club. And I, and I think Scott has shown over time, I, don't worry, we'll get where we need to go. Sustainability, trust in one another, communication, it, it's, it all matters. And, and I do trust them. I believe that, that this group will solve it. And, you know, you can't, you can't just trade in a plan. You can't trade in a team. And, and I don't know, you know, frankly, this is going to sound a, a little bit, uh, I guess, that perhaps uh, a little bit off to say, I'm betting that if we called 29 other clubs and asked, would you like to trade rosters, what it looks like today and for the next five or six, eight years, we'd have a lot of takers. So, you know, I, I guess what I would preach downstairs is, guys, solve it, you know, continue to focus on doing the things that, that we do and we'll continue to be you know, consistent in what we do. And, and that's all we can do is, is message it consistently and wait for it to turn because the players are too, talent for, too talented for it not to. So I, I guess what I hear there, and it's something we've talked about over the last week or so, but I want to kind of clarify it, is, you know, if you start thinking about plan versus execution versus results, that the plan in your view was okay, the execution and or the results have not followed? Well, I, th I think that's 100% correct. And, you know, it's a, uh, we've, this is, this is how you build rosters. You know, you, you did draft and develop. I've, I've said this over and over on these airways. That's what we do. And, you know, Roughly 80% of the production in, in major leagues today comes from players that were acquired via the draft, developed, or traded for and added to a core. And, you know, and we're on the extreme end of that. You know, we, we do very well in, in, in those areas. Uh, you don't make your hay by building teams in free agency. And you know, right now we're watching a couple of teams in the league that have went out and, and poured it in in free agency. You know, one of them is, is riding high and multiple of them are riding low. It's, it's, and you could be on either end of that spectrum. We believe in our roster building model. We believe in our development model. We believe in our players. And, you know, I, I, it's why I truly believe that, that over the course of the summer, you're going to see some of this reverse itself. I just hope we didn't dig ourselves such a big hole that we can't claw out. And then lastly, just and I know this is difficult because we're still in early June here as far as just the market goes and assessing your team and fixing your team and anything else. Do you have any sense and feel yet for what the rest of the league is doing and kind of how do you characterize where, where the market could be based on the results and productivity we've seen and especially in the American League? Uh, you know, I don't know. And we've, we have had teams uh, check in. We have checked in with a number of teams and what I would call preliminary, uh, you know, trade deadline conversations. It's impossible for us to assess where we will be. And, and this is just being honest. We could go out and acquire prime Babe Ruth and, and, and it's not going to help us. <laughs> we have, we're not one player away or, you know, one magic salve from, from fixing this. This is a commitment from 26 players on a roster to, to, to reverse our course. And, and if we 
you know, between now and the end of July, if we show progress in that way, then we'll go out and solve what problem, you know, or problems we can solve. But we're not going to flip out our roster for, for six or eight new players. Uh, again, I feel we are young, we are sustainable, and we are struggling. And, you know, the worst time to make decisions is when you're at your worst. So uh, I, I think the appropriate measure is take a deep breath, watch what's happening around the league for these next 30, 40 days, and, and put yourself in a position to, to make a difference when, when it comes that time. But, you know, to think, oh, my gosh, we need to trade all these guys and start over, that's absurd. We, we built this. It's a good team. We're coming off back-to-back 90-win seasons. We're 500. We're, we're not, we don't have 15 wins today. You know, we just had a really crummy week. Mm-hmm.